All right, episode one of Game of Thrones was absolutely lit. Definitely excited for what's coming up and kind of sad that it's ending. But hey, I still have The Expanse, but that's another show and another story altogether. So to celebrate or commemorate the re turn of Game of Thrones, I decided to do a mini build with my new resin SLA printers using brand new resin from a new company called Beam. So what I ended up doing was printing a pair of Hand of the King, the sigil pins that you see worn by Kyburn, Tyrion, Tywin, all, all the various past hands of the king. And I'm gonna show you two different methods you can do to paint and make these things look realistic like they do in the show. So, without any further ado, let's get into the build. I'm Yasu, I run a little 3D print prop shop called Hero Creations, where I create rad props and armors from your favorite television shows, movies, and video games. Let's get into the build. So first thing in the morning I do is run down before I even get my caffeine is check on my resin prints. So on the photon today using Beam 3D resins I have a uh, Hand of the King uh, pin print. Uh, Thingiverse link in the description. This was chilling for about 16 hours at um, 50 micron resolution, so like it just looks absolutely immaculate and gorgeous. Even though that's not necessarily the maximum that this printer can do, it's pretty, pretty bloody good. Got to pop this off and uh, get it prepped for the little bit of content tutorial I have planned. I actually printed two of these, well, with one fail, but that's another piece of content. Off I go into the removal and cleanup of this beautiful print and getting some new prints going on the rest of these printers like the uh, the experimental prism that I'm work right now testing the cubic photon as I mentioned before and a pair of one how d7s which don't get quite as much use because they well no these aren't necessarily one how d7s these are the monoprice rebadge of, of d7s I believe they are called the monoprice maker SLAs I think. Anyways, correct me if I'm wrong. A little harder to use machines, but they still, they're decent. They're, they're good SLAs. My favorite actually being right now the um, Prism, which is just so easy to use. Once you get the um, the resin dialed in, it is, it's a beast. You're off to the races. Anyways, let's get this cleaned up. So, a little first. So we're kicking it off with two fresh resin prints. I basically pulled these off the build plate, removed the support structures off of it, and then dunked it in 98 or 99% isopropyl alcohol to get rid of all the, uh, the uncured resin that's, that's coated on it. I soaked in it for about a minute or so, and then pulled it out, let it dry, and here I am. I have two very, very detailed pieces. Like this blows the pants off of any of my FDM machines. And for reference, this was done at about 50 microns, which is not the most precise that a resin printer can do. That's roughly, depending on your resin printer, you can do between uh, 15 and 25 microns. So my machines are all rated for a maximum resolution of about 25 microns. Basically, my next step here is to take some two-in-one black paint and primer. It's basically, you know, your standard Rust-Oleum paint that you get in the hardware store, flat black. You can kind of get away with using gloss or satin paints, but I really like using flat black as sort of the base primer coat when I'm doing like a, like a gold metallic look. So anyways, let's do that right now. So here we are with two freshly dried, flat black painted Hand of the King pins. Now at this juncture, we're gonna try two different methods, which is why I have two different pins printed. First one, we're gonna take a mix 
of acrylics, you know, gold, coppers, etc. Maybe you'll even a hint of silver to get a more um, dry brushed, weathered look as you might find on Tyrion's pin that we see in season eight. And then using gold pigments to get a more polished look that you find on Kyburn's Hand of the King pin. So let's get into it. So let's talk about using dry pigments to make our Hand of the King pin super shiny and nice and polished looking. For this, you'll need a couple simple and very cheap things. You'll need your pigment. For this, I use Jacquard Pearl X metallic pigments. This stuff's insanely good and pretty easy to get. Amazon, Mike, no, not at Michael's anymore. Dick Blick and basically your local art store should have these in stock in a variety of different metallics. So it was kind of overwhelming when I got them. But anyways, I settled on Super Bronze, which is a very bright bronze, sort of like, a, I equate it to like a, vine, like a rose gold or a Venetian gold, sort of not necessarily a bright, bright gold. For anyone who doesn't know what pigments are, they're super fine, fine powders. Uh, typically, uh, they find a lot of use in uh, like cold casting, when you're doing you know, like urethane based cast with a silicone mold, you'll typically use these powders to brush the inside of the mold so that when you pour the resin, it gets a, the, the entire exterior of your resin cast gets that nice shiny metallic look. However, you can also use it to brush it on to 3D prints. Pretty, pretty versatile stuff and give it that nice same metallic look. Uh, something I actually discovered kind of just by trial and error, like I was just like, huh. Seems to stick well to uh, like the, the semi kind of st sticky surfaces of, um, of a, like a silicone mold. Why would it not stick to a, say like a semi-cure, semi-dried uh, paint? So anyways, uh, you'll also need gloves because like I said, these patterns are super fine and they get everywhere. If, if you thought glitter was bad, this is worse. And then of course, most important, like I said, dealing with fine powders, you want a respirator, a good one. I'm using my heavy duty one with uh, organic vapor filters, a little probably overkill, but you want something that's solid. Don't use a dust mask. And lastly, you can really use any brush, but don't use your good brushes. Don't, don't use a high quality brush. Use a cheap, uh, cheapo uh, nylon brush that I'm like using here that I'm willing to just toss when it's all said and done. So the process of you uh, brushing on or applying the dry pigments is pretty simple. Take your brush, dip it into the pigment, and then just liberally just brush it all over, making sure you have an even coverage of the entire surface of the print that you want covered up. In this case, with the hand of the uh, king pin, the entire piece is being covered in bronze pigments. Then, once you're all said and done, use either canned air or an airbrush, you know, to blow the excess uh, pigments off. And then what remains, remains. And then from there, you can, I recommend using a shellac or a non-yellowing uh, clear coat. Something either Saturn or glossy works really well, depending on the effect you want, to seal in the powders. Because remember, these powders, they're just gonna flake off and get everywhere. So definitely wanna seal it in. All right, so that is the end result. A super shiny, very polished, almost looks like a perfect cast or a real metal pin. I mean, like as if it was forged and you know, they poured and super polished up. Pretty easy, I mean, it's like, you can't get any easier than brushing on the metal powders, then blowing off the excess and then sealing it. Like that, it's just, Easy. So with that in mind, let's talk about the other method. If you want to go for a more rustic, weathered, worn down, faded metal look that isn't quite as shiny or polished. And that is using 
a technique that I keep talking about a lot, and it's a very common technique in the cosplay circles, but in case you haven't heard of it, it's called dry brushing, where you're basically taking your brush and your paint, dabbing it into the paint, and then dabbing it into a cloth or a napkin or something absorbent, and removing the majority of the paint till you have only the barest traces of the paint on your, loaded onto your brush and then you just quickly brush over the highlights. This results in a sort of a scratch, just the trace colors. The tool set for dry brushing a piece is pretty simple. A cheap kind of crappy uh, brush, I'm just using the acid brushes, I believe these are called from Harbor Freight, and three paints. That is silver metallic, deco art splendid gold. This is your bright gold. You, you don't necessarily have to use this exact color, but I like bright gold. A darker gold, uh, in this case, rich espresso. Or those three colors plus a cheap brush is all you need to do this. So let me show you how to do it. All right, so here we are with our uh freshly flat black painted uh, Hand of the King mug. Wow, that's a tongue twister. And we're gonna dry brush. So we got our paint. We're gonna start with silver, in which case I'm actually going to be using, I actually really like using the uh, the cover because it's the right amount, just tiny amounts of paint. You don't get too much on it. You can, very, you can control it. Our napkin, which we're gonna be dabbing on. So we're gonna kick it off. Let me bring this up here and take a little tiny bit. You can't really see that easily, but there we go. Actually, you can see that. Just an itty bit sprinkle. We're gonna dab most of it off onto the napkin. And then we're just gonna quickly and efficiently brush over the all the sort of top details. You are now, we're not looking for coverage. That's the key thing I gotta emphasize here. We're not looking for coverage. We're just looking at the fine amount of highlights. The silver, you know, you, you might not expect to see silver on a, uh, like a, a gold or a copper metallic print, but it adds to the overall effect and makes it look more full bodied. You'll see in a second. Uh, if you're doing your job right, it's not going to be at all noticeable. Once you add the, the other, the, the warmer colored metallics, the golds, the coppers, all those, but it'll make it more full bodied, so to speak. So you're probably not seeing much. It looks, still probably looks black to you on the screen, but there's a just hints, and I, I stress just hints of silver. Now the other good news, when you're dry brushing, it dries really quickly, so it's pretty easy to handle right out of the gate. So there we are. So we got our silver metallics. Since we got the silver down, our next step is to do our darker gold. I'm using Rich Espresso for this uh, deco art. Just your standard was is probably a dollar, two dollars at your local hobby shop. So again, same process, just kind of loading up the brush and then unloading it into a, a napkin. Might seem wasteful, but it's the right, it, it's the, the easiest way to control. Then you start brushing it on and boy, do you start seeing the difference. Oops, put it on a little too heavy there, but nothing I can't fix just by blending and brushing it all off. So this is gonna be good if you need more a subtle weathered look that isn't necessarily polished metal. So I'm layering it on just a bit heavier than I normally would, but I wanna just give it a fuller body, so to speak. That looks pretty good. And so the darker coat is gonna be, this is your base layer. And then the, uh, the lighter gold metallic that we use ends up being the highlights where we're just putting a trace amount. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. And that's the good news. It dries quick, but doesn't dry so quick that you can't blend it out a bit if you, if you went a little bit too crazy or he too heavy. Looking pretty good, pretty weathered and metallic, very subtle. So we're gonna close up our darker gold. Now we're gonna do our highlights, which is using this splendid gold. It's a very bright gold color. You don't necessarily have to use these exact paints, but basically you want a dark, 
gold metallic, a light gold metallic, and then some sort of silver color. And I'm going to do this very carefully because I don't want to put too heavy of a, um, of a coating on. Otherwise that ruins the, the effect we've been building up. A little work it slow. Now the idea here is you want just the very tip. You don't necessarily want to cover the whole thing. You just want to cover the tops because this is your highlights. This is what the the your light the light from your natural ambient light is shining off of. So you don't necessarily want this bright color getting into the the contours or the shadows. It's just like just use it very sparingly. And so the fingers are going to get a lot more light than say the the um, the rest of the hand here, as would the top of the blade here. Now I'm not going to load any more because the underside shouldn't be getting that much more. Um, well, actually, you're right. Maybe it does get a little bit if you turn it over, right, facing up. So you do like this the lower end of the the thumb here, the the detailing there, the edge, of course, and then the city's top edges too. Because remember, it sits like that on someone's uh, chest. Probably makes sense to put some highlights up top. Because remember, what, what highlighting and contouring is, is you're taking control of the lighting and forcing a certain lit look. And there you go. You have one dry brushed, weathered, hand of the king pin. That's how you do it. A decent explanation on how to dry brush things too, which always helps. And that is how you paint Hand of the King pins in two different styles. You can get polished metal using metal pigments and powders, or you can get a weathered look using just simple acrylics and some dry brushing. I hope that you found that interesting and useful for your own projects, and I hope to do more videos like this. Let me know in the comments which style you liked better, polished and new or weathered and old, and who you think will end up on the Iron Throne in season eight. Anyways, Yasu out. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, smash that like button. If you wanna see more stuff like this on my channel, feel free to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell and guarantee that you see more and more of my videos. See you in the next video.